This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Have you ever wondered why? Like, why do we kiss? Why do we doom scroll? Why do we sit down to go to the loo? Everyday things that actually, when you think about them, are pretty weird. I'm Ella Alshamahi. I'm an explorer, stand-up comic and paleoanthropologist. You know, the guys who are really into human evolution. This is Why Do We Do That? An Anthropologist's Guide to the Modern World, a podcast from BBC Radio 4. So, why on earth do we do the things we do? Your mate might tell you to blame popular culture. Your therapist might tell you to blame your parents. Well, I'm here to tell you to blame the grandparents. The great, 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 give me a second, great, great grandparents. At least for some stuff. Maybe if we can understand our evolutionary story, we can finally figure out why the hell do we do that. On a park bench, on the sofa, in the bath, in bed, of course, at brunch. Is there anywhere where we don't doom scroll? Doom scrolling. You know, just the real fun passive consumption of doom. Just endlessly scrolling through a newsfeed of misery. Or even worse, searching it out. But why do we even do it in the first place? We go searching out for bad news, looking for things that will make us feel ick inside. And so many of us do it. Is it a result of 24-7 doom on tap on our phones? Or... Is it some kind of compulsion that comes from somewhere way, way back? On today's episode, I'll be talking to presenter Clara Ampho about her doom scrolling habits and to Stuart Soroka, a professor at UCLA, who's been looking at why people search out bad news and where in the world they do it. First, though, it's time for an anthropologist notebook. Hear me out. Is it possible that doom scrolling predates smartphones? In 2020, the year of our misery, the good old Oxford English Dictionary added doom scrolling and named it a word of the year. There's this theory that once upon a time, when caves were prime real estate, it seemed like everything was going to kill us. So prioritising the bad stuff was a lifesaver. So knowing that there are yummy mushrooms near a tree is great, but if there were killer insects on the same tree, that's the real information you need to get into your head immediately. From an evolutionary perspective, it's more important to survive than to thrive. And so, hey presto, we have a negativity bias. It's basically a survival mechanism. Study after study shows that we focus on the negative more than the positive. Psychologists have noted that losing $50 consistently elicits a greater emotional response than gaining $50 that we focus on bad over good impressions, even of fictional characters. So it looks like we tend to naturally obsess over the negative. Negative stuff lives rent-free in our brains more than positive stuff. See, we're just made for therapy. But do we all doom scroll? Clara Anfo is a radio and TV presenter who is always across what's going on in the world. Okay, Clara, real talk. Are you a doom scroller? Um, I used to be, but I've had to really stop myself because it just mentally, it wasn't for me. But how do you balance that with your job? I just follow what I believe to be like credible news sources. I follow a lot of like, you know, politics pages and things like that. But I just try not to wade in too deeply because it's just depressing otherwise. It's not to say I don't want to care about other people's problems. But I, I do think there can be an unhealthy level of consumption of just negativity and it's and it's not good for any of us. For me, it's interesting that you use the word consume because I feel like there is an interest in just things that make us feel bad and it feels a bit addictive and it feels like we're consumers of it. And I don't understand fully where it comes from. I mean, oh gosh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I think, I mean, talking specifically about British people, by nature... We're the sunniest, loveliest, perkiest people. 
But that's it. We're very um, pessimistic. But then we've got this weird sort of British optimism. But also like that, for me, this it's so complicated because also, uh, so my family's from Yemen and I've definitely gone through periods where I'm like, I can't read anymore because I'm becoming useless to myself and everybody around me just because it's so depressing. Mm. With some people, I'm like, can you stop scrolling? And other people, I'm like, yeah, you actually need to read the news once in a while. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's not simple. And doom scrolling can you lead to feelings of like helplessness. Hmm, maybe. Here's the thing, though. Being informed is different from doom scrolling. Like I said to Clara, my family is from war-torn Yemen. I quickly learned that the act of scrolling through a whole pile of war news where there is no bottom, but there is a refresh button, doesn't help anyone. It is an activism. It might even depress me into inaction. Years after I got divorced, I heard about the five to one ratio for a successful marriage. Bit late. It's based on research by a psychologist, Professor John Gottman, that for a healthy relationship, you need five positive interactions for every one bad interaction. Because negativity has so much emotional power, you need that many positive interactions to counteract one measly bad one. And the mystery of why so many of us are divorced continues. But are we alike all over the world? Are we all doom scrolling? Or are some of us more into negative news than others because of our culture and our experience of war, religion, politics, and even weather? Stuart Soroka is a professor at UCLA and has been studying exactly that. Stuart, are you a doom scroller? Is that what got you into your life's work? I I actually don't think I'm a doom scroller. I, I mean, I think that we all have kind of an increased attentiveness to negative information as opposed to positive information. And I certainly know people who are doom scrollers, but I don't think I am. Would you kindly define doom scrolling? Doom scrolling, I think, like the novelty of doom scrolling is that now technology has changed and there's a virtually unlimited volume of news available. So we can look for and consume negative information 24 hours a day. Are you saying we're just inherently negatively biased yeah the standard evolutionary account is that uh the cost of a highly negative piece of information is far greater than the benefit of a highly positive piece of information the positive version of this is that actually we appear to have on average negativity biases because actually our starting point is quite optimistic and because our expectation is slightly positive a given unit of bad information is much further away from our expectations than a given unit of good information. Would you talk me through uh, your own study on this? Because it was quite extensive, quite comprehensive, a 17 country study all about doom scrolling. So we went into that study with an interest in whether or not humans, independent of culture, whether humans prioritize negative information over positive information. And so we run those experiments in quiet rooms in 17 countries all around the world using the same stimuli. They're actually all BBC news stories subtitled uh, where necessary. Uh, And uh, we capture at a very, very high rate, 256 times a second, we capture measures of heart rate and skin conductance. And at the same time, of course, we know what video they're watching and we know what the valence of that video is. And so afterwards, we're able to connect the negative or positive information on screen with psychophysiological responses. So in every country, there is evidence that on average, people respond more to negative information than to positive information. You were seeing on average, a much stronger response from people physiologically to negative stories than positive stories. What do you think the impact of an increased heart rate, the impact of kind of increased sweating, what is that actually doing to us? I mean, there is evidence, particularly from psychology, that uh, kind of consuming an endless stream of negative information is associated with depression, for instance. If we ask people about their news consumption and we ask them about their psychological state uh, and we find both depression and negative news consumption, we don't really know which one led to the other. So it might be that media is driving it, or it might be that media is a reflection of of a pre-existing psychological state. We might sometimes look to media for confirmation that other people feel the way we do. So for instance, in that first year and perhaps beyond of the pandemic, I think a lot of us were looking to media consuming negative information, and that negative information actually was psychologically helpful. 
like knowing that other people were in the same situation that we were. We're seeing other people trapped indoors in the pandemic, and that makes it, that kind of can build a sense of community, even though the information is not itself positive. Do you think our stronger reaction to negative information compared to positive information is a biological thing or is it a cultural thing or is it some complicated interaction of both? It's almost invariably a complicated interaction of what I would say is biological and contextual. And I'm saying contextual rather than cultural because I think you know culture is part of that context, but everything else is part of that context as well. All the information that's coming in over the course of not just our lifetimes, but our day is affecting that. So if you wake up in the morning and the coffee machine works and the sink works and the bus to work works, then that's all kind of marginally positive input. But if you get up in the morning and your coffee maker is broken and brown water comes out of the sink and there's a bus strike and you have to walk to work, then that probably affects your reaction to the information in our experiment as well. So we have biological tendencies that like almost any domain in which we study biology and evolution that are constantly interacting with context over the long term and over the very short term as well. Okay, so the news is negative and we're just attracted to that. So we should probably diversify. What does Clara Ampho make of it? And will it keep her limiting her doom scrolling? So doom scrolling is universal. It's completely global. Jesus, that's bleak. But also not surprising. <laughs> so so now it's not just us Brits, it's like everybody. <laughs> yeah. These creators are very aware of how people scroll. And so, you know, I'll follow, I don't know, baby animals or yep, whatever. I that. Just to get a laugh or just to say, ah, oh, at something. Because there's just so much grossness online. In some ways it makes me feel better because I'm like, all right, so I'm not weird. You're not weird for kind of seeking out at various points in our lives all those negative stories. But at the same time, like it's on tap now. You know, mm-hmm. before it would be like, I don't know, I'm assuming you'd go to the neighbor's cave and they'd only know like the bad news from like, you know, that particular mountain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now it's like, let me tell you about the really bad information and, and uh, situation that's going on in some island somewhere. And it's just the, the good news doesn't make up for it. It really doesn't. And it's, I think trauma is romanticized, yeah, really. Yeah. It doesn't kill you, makes you yeah. stronger. Yeah. This is a test. I think we're, yep. we're conditioned to believe that negative experiences shape us more than joyous ones. But you think you will continue to uh, stay away from doom scrolling? Absolutely. Like, just where I can help it. Like, I, I know when I've had my fill. So, humans all over the world are negative. Whether you have access to a smartphone or whether you get your news from a neighbouring village, you're going to retain the bad stuff more than the good stuff. We seem to be biologically skewed that way, which is kind of a bummer. But knowing this could actually be helpful. It's not you, it's all of us. Biology and our modern world have created an environment ripe for negativity, so we should cut ourselves some slack. Ask yourself if this is helping you and those around you. And if it's not, at what point should you stop reading and try and do something about it? A letter, a petition, volunteering, And then, I don't know, go for a walk or talk to a neighbour because the healthier you are, the better equipped you will be to make the distinction between being informed and doom scrolling. And the better equipped you will be for all that volunteering you're about to do. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of Why Do We Do That? An Anthropologist's Guide to the Modern World, the BBC Radio 4 podcast, where time and again we face the harsh reality that we are just cave people with Instagram. There's more episodes on why we do the things we do over on BBC Sounds. Be a doll and subscribe.